All right, welcome everybody to the December 1st, 2020 Rook Community Meeting. Uh, glad to be with you after this Thanksgiving holiday. Let's get going here. Oh, I should share my screen. All right. There we go. Can you see it? Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, not a lot to talk about on the agenda today, it looks like, but let's start off with the project review. This bar is in the way. Okay. okay. All right. Looking at 1.4 release, first of all. Um, so we do have a request for an updated release due to a CBE or the image base, Ceph image, basically has some security fixes in the latest Octopus release. So the one dot, or not one, the 15.2.7 release was yesterday from Ceph. And so I'd like to get that, that release out. Probably tomorrow is what I'm thinking for the 1.4.8, I think it is, release. All right, so that sounds good. Any other comments on 1.4, but I think anything else is in that I can think of 1.4. There's one other, actually one other small backport that Santosh was working on that will be in today as well. Um, I have, would have one, I don't think I've labeled it yet and added it there. Uh, I have one as well regarding the labels. Um, oh, right. Yeah, I, uh, I wasn't sure what labels to add in regards to like what uh, which uh, section it applies. Um, but I would, um, well, let me show you describe it. The logic that merges the labels from a Ceph cluster is, um, well, to put it like that, can be broken in regards to, um, uh, how should I put it? Let me just put it as in my comment. If uh, the manager, uh, in the manager spec generation, the labels are get generated or like merged uh, in the code in the background. It's uh, it has like the labels that the user has set in it. And when the next code, in this case, at least for the proposed D1 is saying, hey, please give me the labels. It would uh, see that the component label is already set um, because the manager label is still set. So there was basically kind of like a uh, I don't know how to put it, like an overlap or something, and uh, that fixes that, that the labels should now uh, be applied correctly. Cool. So, so does that mean if you've specified labels, they will merge with labels added by the operator? Uh, Is that the, no, the merge? We are, well, the um, yeah. um, I mean, we can follow up on the PR too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that sounds good to get it in. Okay. Will do. Anything else, Alexander? I uh, know, uh, just that. Um... Sounds good. There's a little background noise too. So, uh, I, all right. I'm, I don't think it's me. I'm hearing it as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. That that was Santosh. Oh, Santosh, oh, I just, no. I just moved you. Um, all right. So we'll move on to the 1.5 project. Then we're coming up on 1.5.2 potentially for this Thursday. Um, I think we'll have a number of fixes in there on the 1.5 board here. The I mean, we have the log collector that's that's about ready from Sebastian. Um, I, don't I don't know that we need to discuss it in detail here. I don't know, Seb, anything you want to bring up about that? Nothing just special, I guess. It. Yeah, mm -hmm. just maybe I can summarize it really quickly. This yeah. one is about allowing to log daemons, uh, having daemons logging to files instead, instead of just logging to STD out, STD air. So then people from support or people coming from a non-containerized world can actually find logs into a more common location. 
And we also implemented log, log rotation as part of that. So once the log, log collector is enabled, you set it to true. And if you don't set any frequency for the log, the, the log rotation, it will be every day, every 24 hours. And that's it. So we will be enabling log two files as well as to logging to a CD out, a CDR of the container. But then you will see log files once you go inside the container or actually just on the host because we already bind mount the var log Ceph directory onto the host under the data deal host path. Cool. Yeah, this is really nice because like the support team and Ceph core people are saying, hey, where's my logs? Well, the pod restarted twice, so now we lost the logs, right? That's yeah, and, and whatever logging infrastructure the container runtime is using, if it's using journal D, then we always have the limit. If it's always cryo, I think it's up to 50 megs per container as far as the log retention goes or at least just the length of the log, there is not even a retention <laughs> thing uh, from that uh, control run time. So yeah, it's just like too ephemeral for demons like Ceph that would just stay for a while, I guess, not so ephemeral containers. That's why we have to have this. Right. And so it logs to the host and logs are rotated by default, yes. they'll disappear after a whole week instead of sooner. That's right, yeah. It is, we're just reusing what the log rotate configuration is from the Ceph packages. So we don't actually deviate from any standard behavior. We just rely, solely rely on that particular file. So whatever, if, if, if tomorrow something changes inside the Ceph packages that they wanna have a higher retention, they will also get it. We don't, we don't do anything special for Rook. We just reuse whatever Ceph standard configuration is. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sounds good. Uh, any other questions on the log collector? All right. Move on. Um, so the, yep, for 1.5, we also need to update the base image to pick up those security fixes. And I know there's a couple other um, issues or little features we'd like to get into the dot two release. So please make sure they're in, in either the blocking in progress or in review column. And uh, I see that Alexander just added the label one here, thanks. Also added another one to it, one of my PRs. So yeah, thanks. Cool, okay. And we'll get those in. Sounds good. Any other comments for 1.5 uh, or issues that need to be included? Um, oh, Santosh, just before you joined, I mentioned the, the one that you're getting in. So we'll get that into this release as well. And backpad and ported to 1.4. Um, as far as checking for the nodes during cleanup. Okay. All right, so we'll target Thursday for 1.5.2. And then moving on to 1.6. Um, we do have a 1.6 project board now. It hasn't really had any activity yet. It just has a few issues on it to start tracking. Since 1.5 has been out a few weeks now, it's start, time to start uh, planning for that release. I'm thinking March will be the right time frame for this release uh, at the same time as Pacific is released. So we can get that official support for Pacific in 1.6. So it's, yeah, any other thoughts on the timeline for 1.6? Or does March sound good? All right, I'll take that as um, for that plan. I don't have any more specific dates yet. But, uh, we'll finalize that more, I think, after we see how it's going with Pacific. 
in January, February. All right, uh, on the community topics. So Jared added this topic, he wasn't able to make it today, but he, uh, per our discussion last week about the Docker Hub um, rate limiting that people were having, we did apply and he did apply for the open source project. Um, so we haven't heard back from them yet, but hopefully we can waive those limits in the future. Um, yeah, I don't remember hearing too much about this from the community. Um, so I guess I'm curious how much people are hitting this as far as the work project goes. Has anybody had more insight to that in the last couple of weeks? Nope. Alexander, have you heard anything? Mm, nope. Okay. So it must not be too painful for people, uh, but we'll... I, well, I, yeah. I think Quayo uh, added like a message uh, to the top of the website with like, hey, if you have builds failing or something, but um, like even me personally uh, with the customers we have, um, nothing, nothing really yet. Okay. No. That's good to know. Okay, uh, moving on to KubeCon retrospective. Uh, we can be quick here. Um, so we had uh, mention of Rook, or they spent two or three minutes talking about Rook in the, one of the keynotes on the open opening day with project reviews. So that was nice to be mentioned there. And um, a good user story that we had from one of our users, from Dimitri Mission from California Tech. Anyway, so that was, that was nice. The, you know, the platform honestly had some challenges. The, the videos were cutting out a bit, at least during the keynotes. Um, that's not great. I know that the KubeCon organizers are not excited about the whole platform and Trado and all that, but it is what it is. And we did what we could with it. The next KubeCon, I believe, will be May for a virtual Europe event again. And yep, well, hopefully they can improve on that. Any other comments from KubeCon? Oh, actually one more I've got. For the Rook session, so Blaine, Alexander and I attended. And for the last five minutes when our audio was supposed to be enabled so we could talk to the live questions. <laughs> Um, mine, mine didn't work. Uh, so Alexander and Blaine got to answer questions. So uh, yeah, there was, more... <laughs> there was, it was part. like, yeah, let's just answer some questions about it. Like the text queue there. And then it was like, on the screen, like, wait a second, Chris, where are you? <laughs> oh, well, I, I'm all I can't talk. Um, yeah. So anyway, it was good to see some we got there about what questions nothing too surprising i can't remember now what they were but yeah any other comments about Cooper? no nope. okay moving on to outreachy uh probably just a quick update blaine uh, how's how's it going uh, it's going well, I think. The official start date is tomorrow, um, although that's made slightly complicated by uh, Madhavi being in Singapore. So tomorrow for for her comes before tomorrow for most of us. Um, but yeah, I, I think we can figure something out. I'll, um, she's reached out to ask for like how to get started. Um, so I, I think We'll start talking about like when we can sync up and um, uh, um, um, like what what information she needs to get started. Yep, sounds good. Yeah, it's probably already tomorrow, December second in Singapore. But anyway, I like a plan. And then on 1.6 is our last topic in the agenda. Just wanted to bring up, you know, it's with 1.6, it'd be great to have input on 
the roadmap, the features we want to plan on, and I consider, I just consider what we need to, to work on. I think in the Ceph operator, we have a number of features already uh, under consideration. And then the other thought I had is, like, I'd like to consider kind of what what our progression plan is, or you know, or should be for the, our alpha operators, since we have five operators still in alpha state for all time. So if we need to think about, you know, if some of them don't have community interest, is it time to to drop them officially? Uh, we've got the EdgeFS operator that's officially deprecated. You know, can we just remove it from the builds or or whatnot? So I think. I'd like to formulate some thoughts around this in the next couple of weeks and have a more formal discussion about that next time if people aren't off for the holidays yet. Let's see, that should be what the 15th of, for those who are still around. We'll be here. All right, any thoughts around 1.6 and roadmap and all of that? Okay, or any other thoughts to add for the, for the agenda? Nope. Going once, going twice. All right. Thanks everyone for the discussion today and have a good day. Have a good day. Bye bye. Have a good one. Bye. All right. See ya. Yeah.